Okay, so this is this video is focused. It's a short one, but it's focused fully on pod. Uh, in the last one, we just started. We gave an introduction. We went through you know a little bit about the cluster, and then I created an nginx pod. But in this case, I want to create an nginx pod using a YAML file, and then uh, I want to show you exactly what all you can do with the pod. You know, you know where it's running. We can exec it to the pod. We can see the IP address of the pod and inspect it and all those things. So again, let me see. We have our cluster ready, and then we do have the nginx and busybox running. So I'm going to delete them. There's nothing, and now I'm going to use the YAML. So let me show you. There is a hands-on. I have a uh, there's a GitHub um, repo, and so let's start with nginx. I have a lot of YAMLs, and it's public. So if anybody wants to check it out, you know, and test. So I'll just cut paste this one. And I will go back to my terminal and I'm going to do a VI on that's a part dot ML. And I'm going to this is coming from the past example I just don't know maybe you know what I just do an ls out make a directory and I will do a part dot ML. So this is, a, uh, if you see, this is the basic um, definition of a pod. It has a name. I'm calling it Nginx pod. Uh, the labels, it's used for the service to identify and the deployment to identify which uh, application pod it should use, you know, when a request comes from externally from the cluster. And the pod spec is simply the container. So in this case, we are just running one container Nginx and there is something called port so the port is a container port so inside the pod the container will run at port 80 so that's what the container port is about so i will save it and the way to do is apply minus f and it's created so now if i look at it is up and running And I, we saw the logs last time, so I don't want to see that again. And uh, we can exec into the pods. So let's do that. Okay, now we are inside the pod. So if you do ls, you these are all the files that were created as part of when the pod was created based on the nginx image. So if you look at the Docker entry point, watch. Okay, it will be. Let's see the IP address. So if I do a curl on the local host like this one, or oh, let's find out the IP first, and I'll show you from the outside. So if we do get pods minus O wide, so the, the IP address of the pod is ten dot two four four dot one dot four. It's running on worker one. So okay. So I was doing kubectl get pods minus o wide. We have our nginx pod running on port 80, and the IP of the pod is 10.244.1.4. So I can exec into the pod. And I can curl to that IP. Or I could do localhost because that I'm inside the pod and they share the same network space. So the container and the pod share the same network space. So if I do this, I can see that Nginx is running. Or if I even do curl HTTP, then the IP address of the pod, of the con pod itself, right? I will get the same result. And this was running on worker node one so if i went to worker node one to see it so if i'm on the node and i do a curl i can see the nginx i can curl it and if i do a sudo docker ps 
minus a i would just want to see everything that's nginx and i will see the container running 4894 right and if i do the docker can i do an exit let's try this inside the container which is mine four i forgot how to do it Yes, so we are inside the container now, and then you can still do curve. Localhost 480. Okay, and that's it. And so this was the session on the pod what you can do a pod and a container running inside the pod we exec inside the pod we were able to curl it from outside we were able to curl it so basically the container runs on an ip the container runs inside the pod sorry pod has an ip and the port was port 80 that was exposed by the container and the port can be different so if we there is a, something called target port so if we if we change that then the, the when it's exposed it will be a different port but that will be a separate we'll cover it in a separate session so as far as the pod is concerned we have everything i want to do a little bit on the namespace and then right now we have what we have is everything is in the default namespace so creating a namespace is very easy we can just create namespace dev and then we can do, do cut off, get namespace so right now, so when, when we set up the cluster, we have already a couple of namespaces. Default is always there and there is kube public kube system. And then I just created a dev. So kube public and kube, kube system is where all the Kubernetes stuff runs. And uh, so namespace is important in, uh, in the sense that if uh, there are multiple teams, each team can be assigned a namespace. And, all, and then when the deployments are done, the deployments are primarily based on the namespaces. So one namespace can have multiple deployments and lot of constraints and resource limits and um, uh, uh, capacity con concerns uh, control can be done via the namespaces. That's why namespaces are a great way in Kubernetes to um, allocate enough capacity based on you know, the requirement. And there is no limit. Um, it, you can have one cluster and multiple namespaces and multiple deployments within the namespaces. So the pods within the namespace can reach to each other um, by uh, because they're in the same namespace. And outside the namespace, uh, we have to explicitly give the name of the namespace and reach the pod. So that we can cover in the namespace section. So I want to keep it short. And the next lesson, we can start focusing more on... Uh, some other stuffs of Kubernetes objects like resource quota and how we can set a resource quota limit on the namespace and then how we can create uh, different capacities like reservation limits and hard limits, soft limits, etc. That's it for now.